hi everyone good morning good afternoon uh, i hope you all had a great breakfast um my name is mona and i work in TechSoup with the solutions and services team uh, the solutions and services team works on coming up with digital transformation solutions for nonprofits. So we are a little different from the product donations and discounts program that you're probably very familiar with. Um, and I'm really happy to be in these back-to-back -back webinars talking about the solutions that we've been working on to help nonprofits through their digital transformation journey. So today, um, we are gonna be talking about TechSoup Courses, which is a program that helps uh, nonprofit staff and volunteers with skill training. So in the webinar today, we will, we will be going through four steps. So uh, I will first introduce TechSoup Courses, our goals, you know, the needs that we see in the sector and our reach. Um, then I want to, I won't geek out too much, not too much, just a little bit. I would love to explain how we develop courses and training and why our courses and trainings are, are a little different from those that you might be used to. And, um, and then third, I'm excited to share with you our first year of evaluations and the impact that we've had um, on nonprofit staff with our training and on their usage of technology at work. And then finally, I will do a live demo of our catalog and show you how you can access it and what the experience feels like. Uh, now, I, I just want to mention, I will stop for questions at the end of every section uh, so that we can get any queries you have addressed immediately. And then I will leave time at the end for us to have more Q&A as well. Um, so keep your questions ready and you can chat them uh, you know, as you think of them. All right, so introduction to TechSoup Courses. Uh, the TechSoup Courses program, uh, we aim to train nonprofit staff and volunteers uh, to help their organizations become digitally transformed and resilient to support the delivery of their mission and the impact. So really, even though TechSoup Courses is focused on staff training and volunteer training, we're doing it with the with the view and the lens of how to improve the usage of digital tools and how to make organizations more digitally resilient for the future. Um, and in terms of organization needs, so you know this is this is a um, this is a chart that I show often because uh, it's something that we've realized, right? Like the nonprofit digital transformation journey is hard and complicated. And you know what what folks what we find folks often do is they only think of digital transformation as step three and four, which is I'm gonna purchase the technology and then I'm gonna implement it. But in reality, um, you, know, you have to go through a lot of steps in order to be digitally transformed. And training staff on tech is a very, very important step that a lot of organizations skip or are not able to do. So what we find often is that even though organizations have successful deployment of new technologies, uh, th those technologies are not used effectively because the staff hasn't been trained on it, right? And staff training is complicated. It's not only about knowing how exactly to use the technology, so which buttons to press or what menu features. It's all, also about how do you implement that in your daily tasks, right? How do you change your behavior a little bit towards um, using that technology and being more effect, efficient and effective with how you use it. So that's that's a, a need that we see across the sector. Um, also, I, I wanted to uh, kind of bring up these amazing findings that we that we findings that we had in uh, 2020. So TechSoup did this global digital readiness survey. You know, we did it in a 135 countries. We did the survey in 41 languages and we received 11,758 responses to these questions. So this is just a snapshot of the survey. The survey itself, I have a link in here, is available uh, for everyone to look at if you're interested. But really what we saw as on a global sector level was that the pain points that um, you know, the nonprofits came back to us with for being able to adopt digital tools, 53%, so that's more than half, pointed out that educating staff on how to use the latest digital tool was a real barrier 
to adoption, right? So while 53%, you know, of the of those surveyed recognize that educating staff is a big barrier, we also find that the frequency of staff trainings is really limited. So if you look at their graph on your right side, you'd see that only 22% of organizations held any sort of frequent or regular staff trainings, right? And by frequent, we really mean monthly to yearly. So it's a fairly wide swath. Whereas 78% basically said rarely or never. Now, if you think about how important digital transformation is, when you think about, you know, with all of us going remote, how urgent it has been in the last two, two and a half years, this is actually a staggering find. And, and this is the kind of sector need that we hope to you know, fill the gap off through TechSoup courses. So we know there is a sector-wide need for skills training, and we know that staff and volunteers need training that is easily accessible, that is relevant. Relevant is really important here and contextualized to their unique challenges. Now, the reason why relevant and contextualized is highlighted here is because we also realize that when we look at digital training, there is reams of training available, right? Like you can go to YouTube and you can say Excel Perito and you will find a video. In fact, you will probably find 500 videos, right? But what, what we realized is that there is a lot of, there is no training available that specifically brings up nonprofit examples, right? That specifically addresses challenges that are unique to nonprofits. And that's why we, we invested our time and resources in developing these online trainings on TechSoup courses um, that actually bring in the training that you have available for Microsoft Word and Excel and you know, all of these great tools, but we contextualize them and make them more relevant for nonprofit staff and volunteers. And we find that that has a much, like the stickiness of that training is much higher and, and you'll see it in the impact and the evaluations that we did um, where nonprofit staff remember better, retain that knowledge and use it better because we've provided examples that are very familiar to them. Um, so very quickly, just like a very big overview of TechSoup courses. So we launched the program five years ago, 2017, uh, and we have since developed 218 original courses. All of those courses have been developed in-house. We have uh, a instructional design team that is phenomenal. And, you know, we've come up with a process where uh, the instruct we've come up with our own kind of instructional design methodology. It's not our own, we've used best practices, but we've evolved it. Um, and we work with vetted nonprofit experts uh, to create behavior change focused adult learning content. Um, and that's really important that, you know, the instructional design methodologies, we're very focused on behavior change and usage of the training that we provide. The trainings that we have are multimodal adult learning so solutions. Again, we realized that, you know, when we set up TechSoup courses, we did a lot of studies to develop and understand the nonprofit staff personas. And one of the, one of the points that kept coming back to us from our interviews of nonprofit staff was how little time everyone had for this. So we realized that we needed to create trainings that had micro learnings that were engaging, interactive, but where you know, we provided several modalities where we, would, we found different ways in which nonprofit staff could quickly absorb and learn what they needed to. So we wanted to give micro learning so you're able to find exactly what you want to learn easily. We wanted to provide activities that are different. So some have videos, some have little polls, some actually have exercises because people learn differently. Uh, we wanted to make sure that case studies and challenges are specific to small nonprofits. And I want to point that out. It's built for small and medium nonprofits. Um, and we tried to do the same thing across our examples and our price point for the training. Now, we have several delivery methodologies of training that we've developed over time. So we do live events, uh, and those are seminars where we bring in experts, like a panel. We do also expert-led Q&A, because we find that non like it's very useful to our nonprofit learners to have an expert that's just answering questions directly for an hour. 
uh, we do on demand or asynchronous training, which you can take in your own time. And with those, we have developed both basic and advanced courses. We also have what we call learning tracks, which is, you know, for example, um, we have eight courses on Excel and each of those are at different levels, but then we put them all together uh, as a Excel learning track. So it's an entire Excel program. And we actually create these tracks so that it's easy for you to find them. So, you know, we might have a branding for nonprofits track where you wouldn't think to look for these different uh, courses that we have, but we find them, we put them together because they're all, you know, go towards helping you learn more about branding. Um, and it becomes easier for you to find everything together. Uh, we also do both online remote as well as in-person workshops. So we've done that where we use the uh, our online system to support the in-person workshop with documentation and resources, etc. We have blended programs. Um, and those are uh, fantastic where we bring in uh, between 50 to 75 nonprofits. So we, we limit our cohorts to about 75. And the idea is that we have several weeks of training where the cohort learns together. We bring a expert that takes the cohort through this live training. All of the training is structured um, by our instructional designers. So, you know, there'll be homework, there's office hours, there's Q&A, there's discussion forums. Um, and, you know, we're really focused on building a community of learning in that course for those six weeks. Uh, we also focus on surfacing challenges within that cohort so that, you know, when you're working on a particular problem together, you're working on real uh, real problems and coming up with real solutions together as a cohort with the expert. And we've started adding a lot of short videos, guides, and manuals, which is really like the micro learning content that we have uh, in the platform. So there is a lot in there. There's over 200 courses. We've tried to add a lot of diversity, um, and we're doing that, keeping in mind our our you know behavior change focused adult learning uh, methodology. Um, so a little bit around the courses that you will find. So I went through the delivery systems, right? The types of courses. Now, um, our course um, nomenclature that you'll find on our platform, you'll see seminars, 100 level, 200 and 300 level courses, ask the expert and videos. So if you go onto our catalog, that's how the courses are named. Um, and I wanted to provide you with a quick kind of uh, view of what it all entails and, and the price. So you're aware of what our price points are. Um, so basically our courses are based informational, introductory, advanced and cohort-based training, right? So that those are the kind of levels of courses that we have. Uh, our seminars are typically around information where we bring in uh, nonprofit experts to talk about a specific topic. We have introductory 100 level courses, advanced 200 level courses. And then I just mentioned about the 300 level cohort training, um, ask the experts in videos. Um, we have some free content. So seminars, 100 levels and videos. Um, some of them are free, videos are always free, but some of them are free and some are priced at about 10 to 20. So our typical price range for courses is, is you know, 10 to 50. And then the six week 300 level courses are priced at $350 because they are for six weeks. And, you know, there's a lot of attention and time that goes into um, the entire cohort management and uh, course management. Um, I also want to mention that while our trainings are for individual staff and volunteers, we work with organizations. So if you are a team leader or um, a you know, nonprofit executive and you want to find, uh, group, you want to do group enrollments for your staff or you want your staff to get access to multiple trainings, um, we actually offer discounted group enrollments and you can reach out to us and we'll help put together those packages for you the tech and I do have emails uh, that you can uh, that you can use to reach out to us later so I'll go through this again but this is just so you know that if there are if you want to take multiple courses then we do offer uh, group enrollments for those um, and who do we serve through our training so individuals can come in directly get accounts get access to courses organizations can reach out to us and do group enrollments and then cohorts and communities 
um, are programs that you can apply to. So the 300 level courses, when we make them live, you know, we send out emails and we try and do more marketing so that you can apply to be part of the cohort. Um, so the 300 level cohorts, I am. Pro I wanted to give you screenshots of what it looks like. I'll try and do a live demo. Uh, there's a lot of personal information, so I probably won't go in there a lot. But um, you can see that, you know, for example, this is the most recent 300 level course that we did, which is to become a tech forward fundraiser. The courses themselves are super structured. You can see that, you know, within our modules, we go through session one through six. Um, it lays out clearly what we will be doing and how we will reach, um, you know, wrap up an evaluation of kind of what we covered. On your right is a screenshot of the actual forum online, where you can see, um, you know, every week we have different different discussion topics. Every week we have homeworks. Everyone shares their experience with the homework. We all learn together, and the expert provides. Uh, Q and A sessions, right, and open office hours where your questions are answered every week. So these are super engaged; they take a lot of time, but we find uh, a lot of value from offering these cohort programs. Um, and um, you know, so that's that's kind of all of the pro all of the types of courses that we offer. A um, little bit about what we have achieved so far. Since 2017, the program has registered over 75,000 nonprofit learners worldwide. Um, and if you look at some of the, the quick stats, so I love this map. This is actually from our PAR, PAR uh, BI dashboard. And it, you know, it goes up for every learner that we have in these countries. So, uh, so far we have learners that have found our courses in 180 countries. We have over 75,000 learners. Um, our courses have been taken over 280,000 times, which is exciting. We also offer our courses in six languages. So over the last two years, we've actually done a lot of translations. And you can see we have 128 courses in English, but we also have 30 courses in Spanish, 21 in Portuguese, 20 in French, 15 in Arabic. We're very excited. We released our Arabic courses last year uh, and eight courses in Romanian. Um, one thing I do want to point out here is our engagement rates. Um, and this really, um, you know, it, it's based on, we think it's because we contextualize our training and make them so relevant. So engagement rates is basically out of the active learners. So those that actually want to come back and learn, how well do they engage with the content we have? And our engagement rates are over 40%. So in, in the online learning space, these are typically single unit numbers that are less than 10%. Um, for us, the fact that we are at 44% engagement rate is phenomenal. We're really proud of that. Um, and, and I think it's, it's because of the attention time that we give to the actual design of the instruction that we have. Um, I also want to point out the wide variety of topics. So this is, uh, we did this graph a month ago and you know I think it's interesting for everyone to know what do nonprofit staff want to learn? So you can see on your left side, uh, we have, you know, we have the topics that we have and, and you know, you can easily see the variety of topics that we've already developed in our catalog, everything from data analytics to automation apps, website design, disaster resiliency, cloud storage, marketing and communication, branding, fundraising. And you know, if you look at all of the enrollments, 84% of our learners have taken our courses in data and analytics, collaboration, productivity, um, marketing, and security. So we are adding new courses weekly and topics weekly. Um, but it's 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 interesting how how popular data as a topic is um, on our platform. Um, and then also, you know, we, we try and build courses both for the technology as well as the use of technology and the behavior and skills. Um, and you can see that of all of the enrollments, uh, you know, our learners tend like 85% of the time, uh, they want to learn tool, but more and more we're seeing, seeing learners take our practice uh, courses. Uh, and, you know, we can see that the pie chart's actually increasing where today we have 15%. Uh, that are getting trained on behavior and practice. 
All right, so that was a little bit of an overview of TechSoup courses and an introduction to the program. Uh, any questions? Yes, Mona, there's a question from Ramon. This may be a comment. Um, she said the survey revealed that more than 50% would benefit from digital training. I wondered if it was age driven. I noticed that many executives and managers in my age group, which is 60 plus, are not up to par in this area. What are your thoughts on that, Mona? That's a really, that's a really good observation. And at this moment, I cannot, I, I don't have the data in front of me that looks at the age of the respondents. Um, but I know the survey does. So in the survey, we have data around, um, I don't think we have age data, but we have title and role data. So that might be a really good point. And uh, I'm actually gonna go back and look at it. And um, you know, I'll be happy to provide that information uh, to Aretha as well, so we can share back with you at the end of this. But, but I think that's an excellent point. Okay, and Damien said, do you have courses on building staff culture, compassion, fatigue, boundaries, and Carol Ann put um, conflict resolution? Um, we don't have those courses yet, but we are actually, it's interesting you bring that up. We are actually working with a couple of expert groups to develop that training. So broadly, we're looking at change management. Um, and you know what you're talking about, uh, a lot of that falls into it. Um, Again, it's very interesting for me to know that there is an interest in that. Um, and in fact, you know, I would I would highly recommend if you have other topics that you'd be interested in, I would love it if you could share with us on chat. Um, we can suddenly look at adding those more quickly or finding other ways to add those types of trainings. Um, but it's on the plan, it's not available today. Okay, and CN said, how do I enroll my staff and volunteers and, and I'm going to add to this part from Kevin. He was asking about that too, staff and volunteers. Does each person pay individually or does one person pay for a group or, of staff? Um, so we you can do it both ways. Um, so we recommend that the staff goes in and gets their own accounts because it is their learning. It's for them to go through it. And our accounts are free. So they can just go and register and get an account. In terms of payment, uh, it depends. Some folks prefer to be reimbursed so they can pay for themselves and get reimbursed by the organization. Or if you prefer to have just one person pay for everyone, that is also possible. You can simply reach out to us and we can, we can help support you through that process. Okay, last question in the Q&A. And thank you guys for putting your questions in the Q&A. Marty asks, what is your recommendation for volunteer cybersecurity? We use no before, um, but a domain account is required and we don't want to create accounts for all volunteers. I really search for help and have not found much assistance. That is a great, great, great question. No before is a fantastic program. In fact, we use it ourselves at TechSoup. Um, and for volunteers, you know, we do have cybersecurity training. So um, there are two courses that I, I would like to recommend if you're interested, uh, specifically cybersecurity one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, it's a simple training course, but the way that we built that training course was from the perspective of the individual and how the individual can secure themselves and the organization. Um, so I would like to recommend that, that you take a look at the details. I think that's that's probably a great start uh, to get your volunteers trained on basic cybersecurity practices. Um, and again, I'll be happy to share that link at the end of this call. Um, we also actually have added a coupon code of towards the end for 20% off on any course that you want to try. So, you know, that's, that's another, uh, you might want to use that coupon code and just try it and see if you like it. Um, you know, before you get all your volunteers on it. But that's the one course that I would recommend. Okay, um, last two questions. Jennifer asked, if we set up, if staff set up their own account, could we still pay for multiple staff at the group rate? Yes, absolutely. Um, and that's why we recommend that, uh, you know, if you just email us and you let us know, we have a process. So we've done this before for other orgs we can absolutely help you do that. All right, and CN says, how do we reach out to you 
I've requested enrollment for my staff for more than three weeks now, and I've heard nothing from anyone regarding that. So I, I am really sorry to hear that. So I, I, I will definitely check up on that. Uh, however, I am going to share the email. It, we have a very simple email, learn at techsoup.org. Uh, that's the email everyone should be using to reach out to TechSoup courses. Um, and I am I'm very sorry that you've not heard back in three weeks. That's astonishing. Um, so I would request if you could please forward that request to learn at techsoup.org. And I'll make sure that my team takes a look at um, your request as well. Thank you, Mona. That's it. Thank you. All right, so I'm going to move to the second one, and I'm I'm not going to spend too much time. I just did a quick time check and a little bit about how we develop courses and training. So the instructional design methodology, our you know our goal is to provide, and these are three really important points: engaging, effective, and impactful trainings. Um, so our training is delivered online. We try and make the training uh, engaging through our activities, real time interactions, and you know, very basic gamification on, on the platform. Our training is contextualized. We develop it in-house with, uh, with SMEs that we pick. So this, you know, I have here a little bit of a screenshot of what, what kind of contextualization we have. This is from our Excel course. And, you know, the way we built the Excel courses, especially the basic courses, was use this person, Ama, um, who has specific needs, right? So you can see, you know, Ama is a co-founder of a nonprofit organization that aims to reform special education in Ghana. She's raising funds and reaching out to donors, and she wants to take this course to learn more about how to use tools like Excel to make her work more efficient. So basically, we have six courses, Excel 101 through 106, and they take unique problems and issues that Ama is trying to solve as she's trying to figure out how to raise funds. Um, and how to utilize Excel as a tool to track her data, to map it, to chart it, to Pareto it. So, um, you know, that's the kind of contextualization. And throughout the process, we added activities and examples where you can test yourself. You might have a budget that you want to um, track better. So, you know, that's the kind of contextualization that we've developed um, in our tool. I also want to mention a little bit about the type of uh, SMEs, subject matter experts that we engage with. We are very intentional that all of our training is for small and medium nonprofits. We know small and medium nonprofits have unique challenges, and we want to make sure that the cases that we present are relevant to you. So what we do is we pick SMEs that have worked with small nonprofits. So in fact, we go through an entire vetting process before we move forward to develop any of the courses that we have. Um, and you know, we have often, for example, rejected, you know, this is just an example where a SME might be really well known, might have written tons of books, but they've mostly worked with large organizations. So while they're more well known, we find that you know, they're not relevant to the kind of instruction we want to produce. And we tend to work with the SMEs that might be less well known, but have more experience with small nonprofits and the challenges. Um, and then finally, we are very focused on behavior change focused training. That's where the impactful comes in, uh, where we want to affect lasting individual and organizational behavior change vis-a-vis -vis the technology or the skills that we are training them in. Um, and you know, again, an example that I've given is like an exercise that's actually there. I took a screenshot from one of our courses where you know, it's not just about having a video that tells you what to do, we have very short videos and then we have activities and then you know we we then have a test question at the end of that activity so it's really around knowledge retention um and it's about how you will use that training and how you change your behavior towards that particular topic um we use a smart a behavior change focused learning design approach which is basically the addy model uh, it's a fairly well-known best practice in, in the online uh, education space. Um, and our instructional design team actually goes through every step of the process. So our training is designed, you know, it started analysis all the way through evaluation, where we conduct the evaluation of knowledge and impact. 
Um, so that is a, just the quick primer on how we develop our instructional design. Before I move into how we evaluate the impact, any questions? No, there are no questions, but the person that um, said they were trying to get in touch with us for three weeks, would you put your email? You could send it directly to me in the chat room. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mona. Thank you so much, Arita. Thank you for that. I, I really appreciate that. Um, all right. So we spoke a little bit about kind of our training, our instructional design methodology, the fact that we use the ADDIE model. Um, and again, a very, very quick primer about, I'm sorry, this looks so geeky but a quick primer on how we actually do impact evaluation. So a big part of the ADDIE model is to design in the evaluation. For those of you who have taken our trainings, you've gone through this middle section, right? Where the learning design that you experience is basically you go in, you enroll in a course, and then you do a pre-course evaluation. The pre-course evaluation asks you questions about your kind of your level um, or comfort with that topic before you do the course. And then you go through the learning and instruction and we do a post-course evaluation. So the intention through that learning experience is very simple. We simply want you to understand that that learning affects a change in your knowledge about that topic. Do you now know more? Do you like it more? You know, did you find the activities engaging? So that's the learning experience that if you've actually been in one of our courses, you would have gone through that every learner goes through. Now, the broader processes we actually started design, and remember I said we've designed for engaging and effective and impactful, right? We use the ADDIE methodology and we use these three kind of steps to think about how we design that training. And at the end of your training, we actually have a four level process of evaluation. So the first level is immediately after you finish the course, we look at your post-course evaluation, right? And we analyze, hey, did you find the activities engaging? You know, do, do you like the course? Do you know more, right? But that's immediately after you finish the course. So we understand that that's not really a measure of retention of knowledge. It's not a measure of how you might use that training at your job. So which is why we follow up with level two through four of evaluation. So uh, level one is done right after you finish the course. Level two actually happens several months later. So when we did our most recent evaluation, um, you know, we did level two of the kind of survey of learners between, I think, three to 12 months. So there were some that had done the training a year ago, and we went back and we checked with them on their retention. So level two survey, we actually asked them, we look at, we look at, hey, do you still remember the training? Do you use these tools? We also do an actual test. So we actually send them a test of their knowledge where we send them questions and we ask them to solve it um, because we want to test for the knowledge retention. And then we follow up with interviews of the learner um, to understand, did they actually start using the tool better? You know, did they see a change in their behavior at work? How useful did they find it? So it's a fairly long evaluation process. It typically takes us a whole year to evaluate and understand. So we don't do it for all of our courses. We do it for our most popular ones. Um, and I just wanna mention that today we don't do level four of the impact because we don't have enough organizations that are signing up all their stuff. We hope to change that. We're looking at making the process of getting subscriptions much easier on TechSoup courses. That's on our um, roadmap. Uh, for the next year to get that. And, and once we have that, we will start doing level four evaluation as well. So this whole evaluation methodology is actually the Kirkpatrick evaluation methodology. And uh, the four levels are really, you know, like I said, it tests engagement, effectiveness, and impactfulness. And really, we're looking at your reaction to the learning. We are looking at, did you retain knowledge? Did you get knowledge? And then did you have any kind of change in behavior? Um, and this is a quick snapshot of the results. We are really, really proud. This is the evaluation that we did this year. The results you're looking at are for our Excel courses. Uh, we did an evaluation. Um, I, our Excel courses have over 25,000 enrollments. So over 25,000 people have taken this course and uh, over 10,000. So 10,910 people actually responded to our surveys and our evaluations. So the data, uh, that you're looking at is, you know, how engaging do the learners find it at the end of the course? So you can see 
um, that over 90% across the board found our training uh, was engaging, that our structure and format, um, they liked our structure and format, and that they felt that the training was worth their time. So this is these are these are results we're very proud of because it's a huge group that we went and evaluated over ten thousand people, and then we went back and about fifty eight of them uh, participated in the survey and you know the interviews that we did at the end of several months, and what they came back with was that ninety six percent reported improvement in efficiency and effectiveness at work. That was really our goal of designing and providing these trainings. And that's amazing. So what we saw was 26% reported a lot of improvement at their effectiveness at work because of the training that they took online with us. And 70% of them reported some improvement. Only 4% uh, of, the, of the ones that we went back and surveyed uh, said that they had no improvement. So this is, again, you know, our impact and uh, I think it really verifies our, our investment and attention in the learning design that we do with the program. Okay, so before I jump in and I show you what the catalog looks like, the courses look like, uh, any questions? Yes, Patricia wanted to know about your course on um, Excel. Is it pretty much relevant to Google Sheets? Uh, it is a course on Microsoft Excel, so it's not about Google Sheets. So I want to be clear about that, um, you know, because the Google Sheets have different menus. So it's not going to be a one-on-one. -on -one. When you look at our course, the video actually has, a, has screenshots of Microsoft Excel and not Google Sheets. Um, so, you know, it's not a course on Google Sheets. However, there's a lot of functionality that's kind of similar in, in both. Um, but no, we don't have a Google Sheets um, course. Okay, this is a great question from Eleanor. Is there a minimum or maximum number for a group course? Great question. You mean from like several people sign for several people signing up from an organization? Um, we typically give group discounts of uh, groups that are greater than ten, typically. Um, but you know, again, if if you had like five people wanting to take the three hundred level course, which are priced much higher, we would of course consider group discounts. So, and there is no maximum number at all. So far, we've not hit any maximum. Okay, Mona, that's it. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. So, um, live demo. Before I dive in, a couple of things I'll be talking about. I'll be showing you the catalog and how we enter into the catalog. Um, I will be uh, showing you the Digital Skill Center for Nonprofits, which is a separate catalog of Microsoft products and tools because it is the best selling product through our donation program. And we want to make sure that our nonprofit staff and learners access the trainings for the products that they're getting from us. Uh, the training was designed and developed in TechSoup with support and funding from Microsoft. Um, they're fantastic. There's over 50 courses and they range from the tools that we all use like Excel, PowerPoint, Word, all the way through to data analytics and project management training. All right, so before we go into some quiz to remember, um, I will open the courses catalog. Um, can, can you see the catalog? Yes, we can, thank you. Wonderful, thank you so much. So this is our homepage. Um, I have provided a link in the deck. So it's techsoup.course.tc. Um, I am in the logged out state. So I've not logged in yet, which means anyone can access this catalog, right? You don't need an account to look at what kind of courses we have. Um, I wanna quickly take you through our catalog tab. So when you enter into um, the, this web page, you'll see that we've actually categorized our courses. So this is you're looking at the us instance we remember i said we have six languages uh though not all languages are displayed in the us because they're not that relevant so you know for example the romanian uh, courses are found in our european instance arabic courses because of the way that arabic is written is on a separate instance 
Um, but if there is any interest, if there's anyone in here who would like access to Portuguese courses or Romanian courses or Arabic courses, please reach out to us and we would be happy to give you that access. Um, for the North American platform, which is what this is, we have courses in English, in Spanish, and in French. And you can see we've categorized them. So uh, all of the Spanish courses are under this tab and you can just click through and it will bring up all of our courses in Spanish. Uh, similarly, all of our courses in French, you can go into the tab and you know this is because we just wanna make it easy for you to find uh, all of the courses that we have. Uh, I do want to point out to special offers. It's something that we've just recently launched where every week we add any of the special offers we have available for our courses. So if you went into the special offers tab and you did details, you'll inevitably find you know, some kind of offer like 20% off at checkout. So we, we update this section every week. Um, so I highly rec recommend if you're coming in and you're looking for stuff, I would start there. Uh, we've also started adding free videos and other resources um, you know, within our, our tool. Um, and then I mentioned the Microsoft Digital Skills Center where all of the Microsoft courses are. And then TechSoup courses are the non-Microsoft courses. So we wanted to separate the Microsoft uh, from the non-Microsoft. And then of course, if you did show all, you will have all of our courses. So a little bit about how do you read this catalog? Now, uh, we have the problem of plenty <laughs> where now we have so many courses uh, that you know, unfortunately, it's difficult to scroll through. A couple of things that I want to mention to everyone, you'll find that all of our courses are either in this big block, right? So this block is the track. Remember I said, we put together courses uh, that are relevant to each other. So for example, in this fundraising course, now you might not even know that these courses are there, right? So we do this, we put together these packs. So it's easy for you to find all of the courses for one topic. So for this fundraising, you can see, we put in our Adobe Create a Fundraiser invitation, uh, the software seminar series, where we go through how to evaluate your fundraising system, identifying your organization needs, managing the process of dem demoing for fundraising software, and then planning your implementation, and then how to get started with social media for fundraising. So, you know, this is this is several topics together, but we wanted to bring it all in so you're able to find them together. So these are what tracks look like, right? Similarly, we have a Mastering Your New CRM track, uh, Migration and Beyond, where we brought together the two courses that we did, which are slightly more advanced with the Ask the Expert that we had, a one hour Q&A with the expert where all of the nonprofit questions were answered. Uh, the question about cybersecurity, this is a cybersecurity track where you can get both the courses together. Now, I do want to mention that if you take a track, we typically give a discount on the courses. So for example, if you took the cybersecurity bundle, your cybersecurity 101 course is free. So, uh, and if you went in, you will see both courses. So I want to quickly show you cybersecurity 101 for the question that was asked. And you can look at the description of the course. Um, I highly recommend that you know, for every course description, we have this portion that says you will learn or the learning objectives of this course. So you can see the learning objectives are around, you know, getting the password manager, auditing access to applications, making sure you put cybersecurity things into practice. So this is a course that is really for individuals. And then uh, remember I said there is a advanced course, which is really about how to keep the organization uh, safe. So that's kind of all of the tracks. I'm going to go back to the catalog. Now, one um, suggestion I will give is the best way to search our catalog is literally to search by topic. So say I'm going to search fundraising, then you'll find that you'll get all of the tracks that we have for fundraising. So we put the fundraising software separately. We did just communication for fundraising, which includes story makers. And then you can see the individual courses as well. So you don't only have to look at tracks, the tracks we just put on top. So it's easy for you to find these bundles. But if you went down, these are individual courses. And you know, again, to reiterate, if you click through all of this is, you can do this without an account, right? It's so you know what we have and you know what you learn. 
But if you look in, there's always, there's always then about in there and we try our best to provide all the knowledge. Okay, so I was just looking at the time. So I quickly want to show you the logged in state. So this is the logout. You don't even need an account to look at and go through our catalog and find what you want. Um, if you want an account, we have a sign up and I'm just going to click through. It's a really simple sign up sheet, right? It's just your name, email and password and you can sign up and get an account. And this is important because we want your staff to get their own accounts so that they're able to track their own training. Uh, and you can see it's really easy to do that. Okay, now I'm gonna go and log in to my account and I can show you what the logged in state looks like and a quick overview of what the courses look like. So once you log in, the first place you come into is your dashboard. Your dashboard has all the courses that you've either started. So you can see I've not completed registration on it. This is pending. So this is really courses you might have thought that you want, but you didn't really finish the entire payment process. They will still be in your dashboard. So you can go back and quickly refer to them. Um, and then you'll see my courses. So you can see choosing the right tech is one of my courses. Um, if you click through it, you know, um, I can see the same description play space and you know what's in the course now this course is finished so i can't actually go in uh so let me open a course that is available so for example um let's do planner 101 this is our course in spanish And once you go into the course, you will notice that all of our courses are designed in modules, right? So this course has four modules. If you went into the introduction module, it takes you, it gives you an orientation and then it takes you through the learning objectives. It takes you through, so remember I said that we have, you know, we have personas that we build in this course. It's Anna, not Ama, but Anna has specific issues with planning and case studies around it. Um, you can click to go to the next module. Um, you know, we have little gifts that take you through this process that make it easier for you to, to do the same thing on your product, on your, on your laptop. Um, so basically, you know, and you'd see that all of the modules, remember I said micro learning, all of the modules are divided into sub modules. So you don't need to go and finish an entire module to go to a sub module. You can just skip and go to the sub modules to learn what you want to learn. Um, so that's a little bit about how our courses uh, are structured. Um, all right. Um, okay, so I'm going to stop there with the demo because I see that we have only um, 10 minutes to go. Um, so before I open up for questions, I just want to leave you with a couple of things to remember. The TechSoup courses account is free. Uh, you can just simply click here and register in the sign up like I showed you. The courses account is for individuals, so each person can enroll and track their own training activity. Uh, we do offer certificates um, where it's really easy to download certificates. Now, um, we, do, we don't let anyone download a certificate until they've done a certain number of things. So for every course, uh, we, grant, um, we grant learners tech points, so I can show you um, very, very quickly, because I should have done that in the demo, um, that, you know, if I, for example, click here to do something, it depends on how important that topic is. So like I clicked complete because I finished this and I got three tech points. So for certain things that you do in the course that is important to the learning, we have tech points. And um, when you get a certain number of tech points, that's when you can download the certificate. And the certificates are all part of the course. So, you know, I could click my certificate and because I've got all the tech points, I can just simply download it or I can preview it. Now, I want to mention this because there's a lot of questions about having multiple staff join our courses. So this is one way that we recommend organizations track if their staff has taken the training you can only download the certificate after you've done a certain number of things or get a certain number of tech points. And this is a really great way for you to track if your staff has actually taken the training because these are completion certificates. They're easily, you know, once you do the course, they're available to everyone. Um, all right. And then um, 
also the TechSoup courses account is not the same as your TechSoup member account. Uh, it is a new account. We did that on purpose because we know that you probably want your staff and volunteers to get trained. And we want your staff and volunteers to have their own accounts to do so. So this is not your TechSoup member account. So please don't use those credentials. You'll have to get new credentials. Please send us all of your queries. If you want group discounts, um, if you want help figuring out which courses are right for you, please send us the request at learn at techsoup.org. We have a team um, you know, that responds within 48 hours usually um, to your queries. Okay. Uh, and um, I will just before we leave, uh, I wanted to make sure that you knew that we generated a special coupon code for the 300 level course that's starting July 28th, only for these web webinar, for you, the webinar participants, there is a hundred dollar discount on the course. If you use the code webinar hundred, um, you know, for those of you that are interested in this topic, choosing the right technology for your nonprofit, it's a great course. It's very practical. It's for six weeks. Um, please do remember to use this code to get the discount. And then remember, I mentioned for this for this webinar, we generated a 20% off on any course. So anyone in this webinar, if you want to go in and try any of our courses, please use this coupon code. You can try anything, any course, any track, and you'll get a 20% discount for it. All right. So now I will turn, um, I will stop talking and, and turn it over to you for your questions. Well, that was excellent. Um, the only question we have is from CN. They said, I understand that some of the courses are free for quad members. Uh, that is a great question. So if you are a quad member, most of the courses are free. And if you're interested in the courses, please reach out uh, to Aaron Dowell, who's your quad representative, and he works with us to make sure we can get you those courses. Excellent. Well, you've done a great job because there are no more questions. I know I learned a lot. That was awesome. Okay, somebody just popped into the chat room. Excuse me. Uh, what's the discount code for the 20% off more? We'll put the discount code in the chat room. If one of uh, I see some on our team members, if you can put that discount code in there, that would be great. And we will also email this to you within 48 hours. Oh, somebody wanted to know what quad members. If you go to techsoup.org, you'll see a link for quad and you'll see what quad is. It's basically a community that um, TechSoup has started. It's, that's a whole nother webinar. We do have some webinars on quad on our YouTube channel. Well, thank you everybody for being here. I'm gonna um, let Mona, you close it, close it out and everybody's saying thank you in the chat room. I'll leave the final words to you, Mona. Thank you so much, Aretha. And thank you so much for participating. Thank you for your questions. Um, please reach out. I'm sure you'll think of more questions later. Please reach out to us at learn at techsoup.org. And it's not just about questions. If there are courses that you would like us to do, please let us know. We are genuinely looking for your ideas and to understand your needs um, because we're here to address them. Thank you for your time and your attention. And I hope everyone has a great day and a great week. Thank you.